Maura Healy, candidate for governor of Massachusetts, is our guest this morning. Let's go on the record. The attorney general is pressing her case to be chief executive with a month until Election Day. Is her campaign on course for an historic win? The candidate is here. Let's get right to it. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Welcome to OTR, everyone. I'm Matt Harding, along with News Center High's political reporter, Janet Wu. It's great to have you with us this morning. It's great to have Maura Healy with us, joining us at the table this morning. She is, as you know, the Massachusetts Attorney General, an office she's held since 2015. She's also the Democratic nominee for governor. Right now, in the 90s, she played professional basketball in Austria. She holds degrees from Harvard and Northeastern. Thanks for being here. It's great to see you. Happy October, right? It's no longer mm -hmm. September. Happy October. But more importantly, great the election's only a month About away. About a, a month away. <laughs> Which right? I think is probably right. on your calendar. Um, so in the news this past uh, couple weeks at least, uh, there's been a lot of talk about the sudden arrival of migrants in Massachusetts. Um, the state appears to be handling the situation quickly and smoothly so far. Do you encourage more migrants to come to Massachusetts? Well, what I really encourage, and it's great to be with you both this morning, uh, what I really encourage and what this points to is the need for comprehensive national immigration reform. I mean, Congress needs to act, and we need comprehensive immigration reform that will solve a lot of these problems. Would you welcome more migrants to make Massachusetts their target a destination? You know, I am so, I, I was so... Um, heartened to see how Massachusetts responded. I think the Baker administration did a terrific job with the situation. I think that people on the ground, both in Martha's Vineyard and across the state, really came together. And that was really wonderful to see and says a lot about who we are in Massachusetts. But at the end of the day, what we need is comprehensive immigration reform. You know, I talked to employers all over the state and we, we need workforce, we need workers, uh, no doubt, for a range of, of, of industries. Uh, and, and one way we're going to get there is by comprehensive national immigration reform. Congress has to act. I, I was, I'm just curious, as we were watching the video of the of the migrants arriving in the vineyard, I, I understand what you just said. I heard what you just said. On the other hand, any reaction at all to Florida Governor Ron DeSantis sending the migrants here to Massachusetts? It was a political gimmick, political stunt. He raised, I don't know, $20 million the next day or before that, actually, because he's been sending people along with Greg Abbott in Texas, people all over the country, and, and it's it's a political stunt. Unfortunately, it's it's at the the exploitation of human the beings. Humans, but yeah. I mean, that's what this is, and yeah. and we know what it's about. We live in this part of the world where we're going to have presidential primaries soon in this region, and that was DeSantis's goal. So uh, obviously, on the on the ballot in November, a month from now, as we were just saying, there there are ballot questions. So let's just talk about question one, for example, imposing a four percent tax on those making over a million a year. You're, you're, you're a voter. Uh, may I ask you if you'd vote yes or no? I'd vote yes. This you'd is vote yes. this is a really targeted measure that's going to affect less than less than less than one percent of the population here in Massachusetts. I, so, as a follow up to that, should there be carve outs for house sales and inheritance? Well, because know, in this market, as you know, in this housing market, making a million dollars in a house sale is there's potential for it's that. It's not odd. It's not uh, well, right, especially, right. and we can talk about the cost of housing. I mean, this is a real issue here in the state, and there's a, there's a lot of equity built up in in some of the housing um, we have here in the state. But so should there here, be a carve out yeah, for here, those? Let me let me tell you how I see this. First of all. We need tax relief, and I have long encouraged the legislature to act, both in terms of giving the nearly $3 billion in surplus back to taxpayers right now, as they're required to do under law, and then to pass tax reform. Governor Baker put forward a really sensible package on tax reform that Ed would, in fact, deal with the estate tax, mm -hmm. would raise the limit before that is triggered, would also provide relief to seniors, to renters, to low- and middle-income families. So that needs to happen. And again, I hope that, that we see the legislature move on that quickly. But if we go back to the uh, ballot question, if you're elected governor and the ballot question passes, will you guarantee that the money will be spent in addition to what's now being spent on education and transportation? Because there's a big debate about exactly how the money would be spent. Will it be uh, spent where it's supposed to be on top of what's being spent? Mm -hmm. I don't really understand the debate there, Janet. I mean, my office and, and I had to look at this, and it's pretty clear under the law that, that the money, should the, should the voters act and, and pass uh, question one, that that money would go towards infrastructure, transportation, and education. In addition to what's being mm -hmm. spent right now. In addition to what's being spent right now. In addition, that's right. So we'll see what the voters decide. But, you know, I want to be clear. Right now, as I travel the state, 
there's a real issue with affordability and it gets to the quality of life, it gets to Massachusetts competitiveness. And we've got to be working really hard in this state to drive down the cost of housing, of childcare. One way we're going to get there is through tax reform and relief that's comprehensive. And that's what we need to be focused on here in the state as we tackle this issue. And as for this law that was passed in 1986 by voters, do you think it should be um, removed? Do you think it should stay in place? I'm not sure about that. I mean, ultimately, it would be up to the legislature to decide. It's, the governor has it's, a lot of say about it, too, if it happens. Well, let's take it bit by bit. And as I say, I think what's most important right now is that that money that is out there that, that was triggered under the law and go back to taxpayers without further delay and that we get the kind of tax reform in place here soon. Senator Markey is, is pushing Congress to increase the size of the Supreme Court. First of all, first point, do you believe that the size of the court should be increased? Well, let me say something. My concern with the court right now is how politicized it's become. And, you know, what happened with the Dobbs ruling uh, was, was sad, predictable, given, given the composition. That court has become so politicized, and it's really sad as a lawyer mm -hmm. to see that. And I've been really clear, and one of the issues in this race for governor, abortion's on the ballot. Let's be clear, especially after that decision. My opponent opposes abortion. He wants to defund Planned Parenthood. He wants to jail doctors who provide abortion care. And I will continue to be somebody who stands strongly to protect patients and providers in Massachusetts. Also, looking ahead at the term, Bad cases on the ballot, you know, voting rights. I mean, there are going to be some really problematic decisions that are going to come in the next year. So, so with issues like like voting rights, like abortion, Trump related controversies now on the front line. Do you, do you think four more seats should be added to the high court? Well, I'll tell you what should happen. People should get out and vote because it matters who these senators are in terms of confirmation. It also really matters who governors are. You know, as you look across this country right now, given what's happening in D.C., the actions with the states, people's rights and freedoms are going to be protected by the states right now. And we need to make sure, I encourage people in Massachusetts to take a hard look at this race. Very clear to me uh, where I stand in terms of standing up for people in the state, protecting rights, protecting freedoms. My opponent isn't about but that. But increasing the size of the court. I don't think that's, yes or no. I don't think that's a solution. Okay. Got it. Um, speaking about states' rights and abortion, um, are Massachusetts doctors and healthcare groups on solid legal ground right now, as putting on your attorney general's hat, uh, to organize a system to send abortion pills to states where they have outlawed the procedure? Yes, and they are with me as attorney general, and they will be with me as governor. And this is, again, a clear distinction in this race, because my opponent celebrated the overturning of Roe. What I did is get to work with the legislature to make sure that we were passing a law that would provide the strongest protections for our doctors and for our health care professionals and for patients here in the state. The difference in this race could not be more clear. Let's talk about climate change. The Massachusetts legislature and Governor Baker just passed climate change legislation to reach zero, net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. Soon enough, or should Massachusetts do better? I think that Massachusetts has been really aggressive, uh, both the legislature and Governor Baker. I think we need to continue to be aggressive in this space. It's also increasingly an economic imperative for us to deal with the effects of climate change, to deal with the resiliency that we need to build out. I've said for a long time, we've got a great opportunity, Ed, in this state to create a whole climate corridor. Do you know that a lot of the technology that's going to fuel the whole move away globally from fossil fuels to renewables, it's being developed right here in Massachusetts. We ought to take advantage of that. We ought to use that to harness manufacturing, to create great, great jobs. And there are so many jobs that are available in this space. It's the now, it's the future, and Massachusetts should take advantage of it. And as governor, I promise I will be really competitive on this.